This is part 1 to 1 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss implementing change password functionality. A logged in user can change his password by providing his current password and new password. At this point, you might be wondering why is the current password required? Well, this is to make sure it is the actual account owner who is changing the password. Though the user changing the password is already logged in, Asking for the current password prevents a malicious user from changing another user password if that user has briefly walked away from the computer or forgot to log out from a public computer. Our first natural step is to create a view model class that's going to carry the data this change password view needs. Let's place the view model class in this view models folder. Let's call it change password view model. In this class, we need three properties. Current password, new password, and confirm password. These three properties correspond to these three fields on the view. Let's fix these compilation errors by bringing in the required namespace. Our next step is to add this change password view. It's the account controller that's going to deal with changing the user password. So let's add the view to this account subfolder in the views folder. We want to add a new razor view and let's name it change password. This view HTML is straightforward. Nothing new here. First of all, the model for this view is this change password view model which we just implemented and then we've got a form with a validation summary tag helper and then we've got a label input and a validation tag helper for current password new password and confirm password and finally we have a submit button which the user will click to update their current password after the password is successfully changed Using this change password view, we want to send the user to change password confirmation view. So let's add confirmation view also to this account folder. All this view is going to do is display this confirmation message. Next, in the account controller, we need HTTP GET change password action which is simply going to return the change password view. Since this action is not decorated with allow anonymous attribute, only logged in users will be able to reach this change password action. And that's because if we take a look at startup.cs file, notice on this line number 60, we have a global authorization filter. With this filter in place, to be able to reach any of the controller actions, the user must be first signed in unless the action is decorated with allow anonymous attribute. And this works great for us because for a user to be able to change his password, he must be first logged in. Next, we need HTTP POST change password action. This action receives change password view model as the parameter. If the model state is valid, meaning the user has supplied valid values for all these three UI fields, we then use the user property on the controller base. This user property will be set to the logged in user upon a successful login. If the user is not already logged in, then this user property will be null. So using this controller base dot user property, we retrieve the respective user from the underlying ASP.NET users table using get user async method. Now, if this user variable is null, that means for this logged in user, we did not find the corresponding record in the underlying database table. So if user is null, then that means something has gone wrong. So we redirect the user to the login page so he can log in and try again. On the other hand, if we have found the user in the database, we pass the user object, the user current password, and the new password to change password async method of the user manager service. It is this method that actually changes the user password. If changing the password did not succeed, loop through the errors, add them to the model state and re-render the change password view. Now, if you're wondering what errors could prevent us from changing the password, well, if the provided current password is incorrect 
or if this provided new password did not meet the complexity rules. So these errors could prevent us from changing the password. On the other hand, if the password change succeeded, we want to refresh the sign-in cookie. So for that, we call the sign-in manager service, refresh sign-in ASIC method, passing it the user object. And then we send the user to change password confirmation view. Our final step is to include a menu item to get to the change password action. Let's include it under this manage dropdown. So let's go to the layout view. Here is the manage dropdown menu. Let's make a copy of this anchor element and change the text on the anchor element to password. And when we click this manage password link, we want to take the user to change password action in account controller. With all these changes in place, let's run our project and quickly test it. Notice under Manage dropdown, we have password and when I click that, we are redirected to the login view. Why is that? Well, to be able to change password, the user must first be signed in. And remember, our change password action is not decorated with allow anonymous attribute and we have a global authorization filter applied. So to be able to reach this change password action, we must first be logged in. So let's log in. We are redirected to the change password view. Now let me provide incorrect current password. Let's also provide a new password and confirm it. Notice we get the validation error incorrect password. Now let me provide my correct current password. But let's provide a new password which does not meet the password complexity rules. We get the validation errors as expected. Now let's provide the correct current password and also a new password that meets all the password complexity rules. There we go. Password changed successfully. So to change password, use the user manager service change password async method. After changing the password successfully, we have to refresh the logged in user sign in cookie. For that, use the sign in manager service refresh sign in async method. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.